well, a few months have passed, and we've gotten a lot of finish work done here in the log cabin. Now we're back to finish up the last couple projects on the list. Say, so, how's breakfast coming? Oh, just about 10 minutes. You want to start on the coffee? Sure, I can do that. All righty. What are we having? Pancakes. Pancakes, great. Well, we'll just show you highlights of most of the work that we're doing on this trip, but then we'll focus in on elements that are unique to log home construction as we head toward the finish. French roll story? Absolutely. Okay. That's what I'll make. We're just finishing up a project we have left over from our last trip. We put in a stairway and a railing made out of log rails and spindle. In fact, I just cut one more spindle here for the section we're installing over here. This is the handrail for this section, and we're going to be doweling and gluing the spindles into holes that we'll drill on the underside. That part's pretty straightforward. What's been difficult is scribing and then cutting the ends of the rail to fit snugly against the rounded logs. Anyway, the handrail's taken care of. Now, we'll move on to the shoe rail. With our shoe rail scribe, glued our spindles to the rails, and now we can attach the whole thing using galvanized screws. Okay, you can put a little pressure right against that. After screwing in the end of each rail, we're going to start on the other side. materials here on our back porch stairs that we used on our front. Now each of these jacks is a pair of 2 by 12 redwoods that have been screwed together and then cut to a rise of 7 and a half inches and a run of 10 inches. Well the tread shouldn't be strong enough. We're using a pair of 4 by 6 redwood spaced about an eighth of an inch apart and we'll be securing these to the jacks using 6 inch galvanized screws. Now first thing we want to do here is pre-drill the treads. Press it in the adhesive Check the overhang. My way, then. Good. finished. Now because we aren't installing risers, once we get this tread in, we're done. We also want to install railings along the stairs and around the entire deck. That's a job that's going to have to wait until we have a little more time. So it's on to the next item on our list. Well, we're taking some time now to inspect the logs for checking, which is the cracking and splitting of logs after they've been up a few months. It adds character to the building. At the same time, it can let moisture into the logs, which could rot them. So to take care of the really big ones, we're using this caulk-like material that flows into and seals up the crack. Dab it on with a paintbrush. Wipe it off with a clean rag. Now you don't have to concern yourself with all of the cracks. For instance, water can't leak up into cracks that are in the bottom half of the log. It's just the big cracks in the top half of the log you need to worry about. Water can seep in at the log ends, so we're also going to add a little here to seal up the end grain. On a big house like this, that could be a lot of sealing, but it'll help the logs last That's that much longer. Another 
other thing to check is the chinking between the logs. Now, we used a synthetic material that adheres tightly to the logs to prevent leakage. But sometimes, the chinking will crack, or it'll pull apart if two logs settle differently. But we can fix it by just putting in more chinking. It's like filling a plaster crack with spackling. First, you make a clean groove with a utility knife. Towel in enough to fill the crack. And then, move it out. It's waterborne, so you can mix it to help feather the new material into the old. And finally, you should clean off any chinking that gets on the log. Last fall, we had Tom Tusek put on the first coat of exterior stain to protect the logs from moisture and to seal them. Now, the manufacturer recommends that you put on a second coat after the first coat is dry. So, that's why we brought Tom back to put on some more stain. The stain comes in several colors, but we're sticking with the natural tint we used last year, which barely changes the log color at all. You can also brush on the stain with a wide paintbrush. And the best technique for this is to brush it on in one direction and then back brush it to really get it to penetrate the wood fibers. However, this is really just a demonstration. In order to save time, we're going to let Tom do all the staining with his power sprayer. We'll just move on to our next project. Our next job is putting together some log furniture we ordered from Colorado. These are lodge pole pine logs. So they go well with the white pine logs we've got in the cabin. And the manufacturer drilled out the holes and then labeled the pieces for easy assembly. So we just match up the holes to the right logs and then we'll secure them with lag screws. So with this frame put together, we can go ahead and finish the rest of the room. Can you help me with the magic? Yeah. Okay. Grab that in there. Wait a minute. One, two, three. Here you go. Oh. These things are hard to work with, huh? Yeah, that Oh, this looks great. Well, I suppose we should get those bunk beds put together, huh? All right. I'm right behind you. All right. comes with a pair of adjustable legs with cross braces in between. Uh, we adjust these to the water's depth once we have them in the water, which is our next step. Now the legs are just on one end. The other end attaches to the dock section that's before it, so it works kind of like a chain. Now we've got four sections of dock already, and this fifth and final section will go out to the left, forming an L. To get the section in place, somebody had to get wet. John and Bill volunteered. Thanks, guys. When it was set, it's a lip on the end locked right into the slot we secured on the previous section. All right, well, I guess all we have to do now is get those adjusted and bolted down and we're done, huh? Yeah. Oh, here, let me get the hard one. No, all right. I'll well, tell you, we sure appreciate you guys doing this today. It's a big help. Well, looks like you got a lot done. We'll go do this after, Eddie. Yeah, good. You going to be there Sunday? You bet I will. Be there, be square. All right, 3 o'clock. Yeah. Take care. How's it going here? Oh, not too bad. I'm just putting the cover on. Did you need a little pliers? 
Oh, not too bad. I got enough for lunch. How was your walk? Oh, I got some great shots. The light was perfect. Oh, yeah? Yeah. It's a gorgeous morning. Yeah, it is. Well, this morning, Jojo's going to be putting up some wood blind, and I'm going to be painting some doors here. Last fall, when we ordered our windows, we got what the manufacturer calls a flex front finish on the outside. It's a lot more durable than an enamel finish you can put on after the fact. Unfortunately, it wasn't available on the doors. So what the manufacturer did was give us a formula to match the color. We mixed up a can of that, and that's what I'm going to be putting on this morning. I'm using an oil-based enamel, which will give us a smoother finish in a latex. And I'm working with a trim brush here to put our first bit of paint on the casing. I'm starting to cut in along here underneath the log isn't difficult, but you do want to go nice and slow. If I get paint on the logs, that's going to be difficult to clean off. In fact, I'm sure Joelle will probably have the blinds done before I'm half done here. We've got a lot of windows in the cabin which let in the light and provide us with views of the lake. But all this glass sometimes makes us feel like we're living life in a fishbowl. So, to give us some privacy, we're putting up some two-inch wood blinds on some of the windows. These are handy because the lift cords can be on either side of the window, and they're easy to install. The hard part is just getting them out of the box sometimes. The ends of the blinds will slide into brackets, which can screw in flush with the trim. is kind of wide. I also screwed in a center support. Now with all the brackets in, jockey the headrail into position. Only one end at a time. There. Now I lock the headrail into the bracket and put the wand on. These wood blinds come with a matching balance. And we chose a light pine finish to match the interior stain. But there are other colors available. Hey, can I come through? Sure. Come all right. On. How's it going, anyway? Uh, oh, not too bad. It's going slow, though. I'll that oh, yeah. Well, I'm all done with the blinds. Do you want some help? Yeah. In fact, if you want to grab a brush and go out and back, that would be great. Okay. It's still sure. a little wet. Can I take this bucket? Yep, go ahead. Well, I'm all finished up here in front. I took the windows out of the jam so I could do a much more thorough job painting them. I'll just let them dry here. I can run back, see how the old gal's doing. Well, one down, one to go, huh? Yeah, I don't know when this is going to dry. We might have to finish it up next weekend. Oh, that's no problem. 
Hey, did you ever clean those fish? Uh, not exactly. But I tell you what, if you take care of the brushes, I'll take care of the fish. All right? Sure. Okay. Well, this ought to be warm enough by now, huh? Yeah, the fish is done. Our refrigerator slid right in the opening we left for it in the cabinets, but to really get it to tie in, our cabinet manufacturer supplied these panels made in the same shaker style. We saw the panel, we first removed the handles, and then we slid these adapters into the trim. And the panel slips right into the adapters. Need some help? Alright. Now, to lock it in place, we'll put in two more adapters on the remaining side. So that's what we're taking care of now, putting the last view up. And of course, before we start working on this area, we turned off all the power. We decorated this bathroom with antique-style fixtures, a pedestal sink, a pole chain toilet, and an old-style pub. And now to maintain that look, we're going to put up the copper wall fences. You got the wire up there? Yeah. Great. So you have more light bulbs there? Yeah. I'm going to play in just a second. I'm just about done with these. Well, we're ready to finish off our second floor bath. It's been delayed until we can find just the right antique for the vanity. We've got it, so we're all set to go. Okay. So now we're you did a nice job of finishing this. Thank you. Now what we've done with this antique chest of drawers is we've taken the top off and then I've run a bead of caulk all along the rim. And that's what we'll use to secure a new countertop. For the top we're using Coriat. We ordered it in a bone color so it match our pictures in the tile. We got a hole cut in from the sink. Now we just want to set it on top of the caulk. Okay, how much overlap do you have on your side? About an inch. An inch? Okay. Okay, we've got the faucet, the handles, and the drain all put together. Now, we can just set the sink in the opening. Coming through. Okay, you got it there? Yeah. All right, so once our sink's in here, all we have to do is attach the drain waste and vent copper pipes on the bottom of the cabinet. All right, there we go. But we can do that whenever we get around to it. We have a bathroom downstairs we can use. Now, adapting an antique like this definitely takes a little bit while longer. It's slowed it down a bit. I think it's definitely worth it for the application. All right. about this site is it has just tons of rocks. We put them to good use on the fireplace and foundation, and now we've found just one more good way to use them. We've been working on this stone walkway in front. 
We've been finding rocks that are flat on one side and look as though they kind of fit together. Yeah, that'll work. And then we just embed them in the sand. A sidewalk like this isn't going to turn out perfect. We're using a level from time to time just to keep it relatively level with the footing up by the stairway. Or at worst, just have it slope away a little bit from the stairs. And we just have a few feet left to go, so we should wrap this up in no time at all. bird looks tasty. I'd give it about another half an hour. Yeah? Well, I suppose we better get the rest of the food on then, huh? Yeah, we probably ought to set the table, too. Okay, well, give me two more seconds. There. All right. I'll meet you in the back. Thanks for watching. I'm Dean Johnson for Hope. And I'm Julian Lee Boyce.